It's the mosque where prayers have been replaced with punches and not for the first time. Recently, our reporter Martin King found himself caught up in the first brawl over allegations of missing money. Now they've turned on each other again. <laughs> I think myself they're getting away with too much and I think Australia, I think you're getting too lenient. There needs to be more discipline and that is my honest opinion. We don't need that. We don't need that type of conflict. We don't need that type of destruction. It's the mosque where peace doesn't stand a prayer. Warring factions wearing thin for locals. The whole thing's out of control. The whole thing. It's supposed to be Friday prayers, but these warrior worshippers trash their sacred tradition. It's a battleground, and not for the first time. You're leaving the mosque right now. It's OK, Bella. This should have never happened in the mosque. But what, but, but what, do, you, what do you think of this? I mean, this, this, is, this is not acceptable behaviour. It's the last thing Mohammed Mohadeen wants to see. He's the president of the Islamic Council of Victoria. And across town at a different mosque, he's hosting Open Day, as opposed to this, mosque open season at Preston. This is not acceptable behaviour, because this is a... Well, this is disgraceful behaviour. This, this is disgraceful. I accept that. Mm. I'm not shying away from that. It's we do not ex expect the sort of behaviour in the mosque. This is the house of God. Mosque Open Day is all about families visiting a mosque for the first time, understanding Islam and fostering friendships with their Muslim neighbours. I mean, I know the basic Muslim message is peace and goodwill, but of course it gets hijacked like every other religion can get hijacked. So, By a few extremists. So, uh, yes, and I was mm. interested to sort of just come along and see what goes on here. Um, it's just another part of the community. If you haven't been inside a mosque, here it is. Dandenong is a showpiece. Plush carpets, a chandelier, soaring ceilings, even explanations about terrorism, jihad and halal food. What did you learn today? Uh, Everything they've spoken about, I did not know any of it, about the traditions, about what they do on Friday nights, um, throughout the year, about the hijab, about the community. It's quiet, respectful and dignified. Please remove your shoes. Wash in the ablution room. Uh, purification. Purification. Yeah, yeah so th this is purification? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you do this every day? Pretty much. Pretty much yeah. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Five times a day. Five times a day? Yeah. You, you wash five times a day? Yeah. For purification? That's right. Thank you. You can ask as many questions as you want. We'll try and answer. Very few Australians have had first-hand conversations with Muslims. And that's understandable because we're only 3% of the population. Shakira Hussain is a fellow at the Asia Institute at Melbourne University. She says it cuts both ways. Yes, this behaviour is appalling, but so too, she says, is racism towards Muslims. It can be very frightening, and Muslims report that after particular high-profile stories, particularly after reports about terrorist attacks, even not on Australian soil, there's always a spike in abuse and harassment on the street. There's always a spike in my hate mail, for example. I think that it doesn't help integration when it's forever Muslims who are seen as being a problem in Australian society and it's a problem of other people not managing to accept rather than Muslims not managing to integrate. If you want my humble opinion, yes. these men need, need to get some manners. Yes, certainly. Um, and they, they need to grow right, up and, yeah. they, and, they, and they need to show some decorum yeah. and, and respect. But that for, is in any, any community. Respect for values. But that's in any community. You've seen the UP, the riots that are taking place between the extreme left and ex extreme right. We've seen that yeah. in the city of Melbourne. It's not a particular faith. It's not a particular group. Unfortunately, this took place in the mosque. Mm. 
You can have all the mosque open days you like to educate the public about Islam, and that's a good thing. No one denies that. But that doesn't address the fundamental issues of places like this, the Preston Mosque, because it's what happens inside that's the real problem. Inside and outside. Please don't hit the camera. A suburban street, a howling mob, a sheikh banned from his own mosque, his angry army determined to storm the fortress, and the inevitable full-scale riot. What did you think of that sort of behaviour? Absolutely shocking. Pensioner Mel lives at the back of the mosque. I think it's about time Australia wake up. I really do. And it's not fair on the Australian people. You know, you've had to work hard. Your parents came over here or whatever. They've started up a beautiful country. I tell you what, it's going down, and I can feel it. Uh, millions, millions of dollars. Yeah. Millions. 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 Millions of dollars. The former imam here at Preston, Sheikh Mohammed, claims huge amounts of money are missing from the mosque, some of it sent overseas to fund extremist activities. He's been banned from the mosque for other reasons. Tariq Nasher is a mosque administrator who denies the claims. Can you prove to me this money's not missing? There will be proof. No, but can and that's why I'm saying to you, we're happy for inde any independent body to come in and do their search, and we're happy for that. And I'm saying that on live TV, OK? As to that fear that money may have been sent to extremist groups overseas, he says... That's not true. That's not true at all. Well, what do you think of that allegation? Well, that's what we're going to defend. There's no money that I don't think has been sent out from that mosque to any terrorist group. But can you prove that? I can't prove that, but I'm, I, I've been having discussions with them. They have been... So, mm. again, can you prove that the money has gone out? No. Islam has an image problem. In, in Australia, doesn't yeah. it? Islam has an image problem in Australia because... And this is why you're doing this today. Yeah, we, we are doing yeah. that and to dispel the myths that are there because mm. the image is that created about what's happening overseas. And again, it's a small group that's doing that. It's not that we are 1.6 billion Muslims. Mm. And most of them are peace-loving, wanting to lead a normal life and be part and parcel of whatever society they're living in. Alhamdulillah, Father Rick and daughter Amy came to Dandenong Mosque with open minds. It's when you have an opportunity to stand here and talk to people and understand what the, how they approach religion, you realise it's no different from the way we approach religion or someone else approaches playing footy and barracking for the footy mm. team. Um, there's a passion and there's an understanding and there's a history and they just want to share that in an open and honest way. Again, I thank you all very much for coming to the here to us. Maybe so in Dandenong, but over in Preston, the welcome mat isn't quite so, well, welcome. But these people, yeah. the, these are not good, good values. They, they're not, I'm saying is, you ne never know that they will learn from this mistake, learn from what has happened. People can change. Mm. These you, are hardcore you, fellas. You, ne you never know. These you, are tough uh, blokes. But I, these see, blokes I just want to fight. I'll tell you something, I never give up hope on anyone. That open day was a great idea. Victoria Police attended the Preston Mosque following that second brawl, but no offences were seen when they arrived.